Hey everybody, this is Daniel from Socky Dog Homestead, and do I have a treat for you today. Now, on my homestead here, I really try to be as sustainable, self-sustainable as possible. Let's take my, my chickens, for instance. I didn't get chickens just for the eggs and just because the chickens are nice to have around and whatnot. I got them for the manure, okay? And so, with the chicken manure, you know, as you've seen in my composting video I use that in my compost I compost it down and it makes amazing compost um, I'll link that video below today though I want to I want to make some compost that I can make today and use tomorrow technically I could make it today and use it today but uh, this process takes about 24 hours so what I'm going to do is uh, take you down here with me and show you the process. All right, so today we are going to make some rabbit manure tea. All right, if you haven't used, uh, there's other manure teas and whatnot out there, but if you haven't used rabbit manure tea in your garden, you are missing out. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so good. Like, people sell their rabbit manure. To other gardeners so they can you know use the rabbit manure in their garden so um, I do amend all my beds and whatnot with the rabbit manure as the whole pellets um, when I'm flipping a bed or when I'm flipping you know my garden or whatever but the best way to use it is as a tea because the plant can uptake it right away it's it's amazing you'll see night and day difference in your in your garden so come along with me i'll show you how i make mine and i got a nice little twist there at the end i kind of already gave it away though over here i got my handy dandy tidy cats bucket got my rabbit manure down in there um and that's that's another homestead hack right there guys um if you got cats and you use these big buckets like this don't throw them out save them you can use them for all kinds of stuff. Um, this one right here is for collecting manure. And so I put the manure in there and I take it out to my gardens with me. And I can shake it out in my gardens. If it's a small bed that I'm that I'm flipping. If it's a large bed, I'll put it in a wheelbarrow. But, yep. Homestead hack of the week right there. All right. Over here, we got this cool little contraption right here that's going to blow air down into my tea. I don't know if you can see them very well, but they got little holes on the bottom here. I can focus that in. There you go. And um, so this pump right here will blow air out. I got all these turned off. Let me turn that one off too. Um, and uh, it'll blow air through that hose and out through those holes right there to get her bubbling and this just sits down in there now i'm gonna put a link to this in the description uh you don't need this one you can get a different one but I'll, I'll put a link down there to it if it sits all the way in the bottom it's made for a five gallon bucket which this is uh if it, and it fits really nice down there in the bottom but it doesn't bubble very well when it's all the way on the bottom i mean i could use a uh probably a more powerful uh, motor here, but I don't have one. And so I just cock it to the side like that just a little bit. I just kind of put it down in there like that and it bubbles up real good. So let me uh, plug in my, my, um, my blower. And there you go, bubbling up right nice like. That's gonna do really well. And you're also gonna need these little bags right here. They are like paint strainers. I think you can get them from the paint section of any of the big box stores or if you got a paint store near you, they should have these. So that pack comes with a whole bunch of them. I mean, it's, I still got a whole nother roll in there, but it comes with a whole bu big bunch of them. All you need is one. And voila, I got all my rabbit manure that I need in there. It's a good little bit if you... Let's sit this bag down here real quick. So, I mean, you know, it's about two softballs maybe. 
maybe two and a half softballs. <clears throat> and then this right here is going to sit down in here. I like to push it down in there a little bit, get it working. <clears throat> All right, I had to tie that top off a little bit, but I get it to work in there a little bit. And then I let it go ahead and sink down in there. Now it's going to rise back up to the top. You see that? That's when I bring my rock. And I sit me a rock down there. Kind of like so. So now it stays down there at the bottom. All right. You want that down there at the bottom where all those bubbles are working at. Um, and then it's kind of a waiting game. Now. I got a secret weapon, and it's right over here. I put a little bit of that black strap molasses down in there. Let me tell you, it'll take your compost tea to a whole nother level. I just pour a couple gulps in there. All right, I poured a little bit down in there. Like I said, just a couple gulps. It's hard to film this with phone in one hand, and I'm trying to work with the other hand. So, But uh, rest assured, I did pour some in there. And that gets the microbes down in there to eating and stuff. So, you know, it'll, it will, uh, like I said, take your compost tea to a whole nother level. And you want it to be bubbling like this. You don't want it to be stagnant. You don't want it to get, you know, anaerobic or whatever. Uh, you could actually do this in a 55 gallon drum and put you a big old bag of comp compost, I mean, of uh, rabbit manure in it. And you could like leave it in that it just as long as you keep it bubbling, you could leave it in that. And you could, if you, I mean, if I had a 55 gallon, um, I'd probably fill it up once a year and then just use it throughout the year in my gardens, put a little tap on it and then just run it through, run it to my backpack sprayer and then just take that joker to town. You could also use this as a drench so you can just pour it on your plants and whatnot. That's what I tend to do with it a lot. I like to just pour it down the row. All right, so we're gonna let that right there just sit probably about 24 hours, maybe a little less. I might come get it in the morning and whatnot, but uh, we're gonna let it sit like that overnight at least. And um, I'll be back to uh, show you the finished product. Well, I came back out here to check on it and it's doing well see that it's gotten a lot darker the color of the tea and that's perfect that's what we want so I'm gonna let it sit overnight and uh, come back and check it in the morning all right guys it's the next morning and um, it's looking great the uh, the foam on the top there is, is perfectly fine actually I I love to see it that lets me know that you know, there's some activity working on down there. Uh, a lot of times it'll bubble all the way over. So um, be mindful. I have it out here on this concrete slab. It'll just uh, wash right off of this. But you don't want it on a floor that, um, you know, that you may not want it to get wet or, or whatnot. So, um, but it's ready to go right now. So, yep, you could take it right now and you could... uh Pour it at the base of your plants. Uh, you could put it in your backpack sprayer. But yeah, you could do a 40 layer spray with it um, on your backpack sprayer. You could, um, you don't have to use it all at once. Um, you can let it sit for a little while, but I would put it back on the bubbler um, if I let it sit for a while. Other than that, that's about it. Um, Oh, 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 I got a question to ask, answer for you guys. Is it worth it? I believe 101,000% that it is worth it. Um, I was working at a farm, well, I was volunteering at a farm uh, a few years back, probably about five years ago, and um, I did an experiment. Because they were already using the rabbit manure um, tea. And so I wanted to know 
how good it worked and how, you know, whatnot. So I planted some sweet potato slips and I did a test with it. I did one side. Um, well, both sides had rabbit manure in the soil with it, right? The, uh, the dry amendment. And then on the left side, I put, um, I used to do a four, four, four liter spray with, uh, with my backpack sprayer. And on the right side, I just, I didn't do anything else to it. And so once every other week, I used to do a four liter spray, right? So at the end of the um, the uh, season and it was re and the potatoes were ready to harvest, I started digging and I would dig on this on the left side. I would dig on the right side, and I would I just I kept going down and I could literally call out. I could say, "Yep, this side this you know side is going to be bigger than this side," and one hundred percent the the ones that got the foliar spray were twice as big as the ones that didn't. And I mean, it was in a controlled setting. There were no other fertilizers used, only rabbit manure. Even at pre-plant, we only used the rabbit manure, um, just the um, manure itself and put it in the, in the uh, farrow there. Great test. And it really, really showed, I mean, there's no other reason why one row would be twice as big as the other row. There's there was no nothing else used. So I'm a firm believer in the rabbit manure tea. Um, if you want to try it out and maybe um, like you have a raised bed, you want to test half of the raised bed and and not do the other half. By all means, do it. You will 100% see a difference. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I really appreciate it if you give me a like, subscribe to the channel. Um, if, you, uh, if you like this video, um, I have another video here that you may find entertaining as well or informational as well. Um, thanks for watching. I appreciate your time, and we'll see you in the next video. And do a foiler, foiler however you say that word. <laughs> you could do a foiler for you. Foiler. Foil, 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 foil,